Coming up on show 562, Tesla's Model 3 is seen in the Chinese Gigafactory. The Chevy Bolt wins an affordability contest and Bollinger reveal their off-roader soon. And we're talking European plug-in sales. The Porsche Taycan hits the Nürburgring and the Volkswagen ID4 slash Cros is pictured. Well, good morning, good afternoon. Maybe good evening, however you're listening around the world. Welcome to the show, EV News Daily, Monday 26th of August edition today. My name is Martin Lee. This is what you missed in the last 24 hours of news in the world of EVs. I go through all these stories so you don't have to. Well, thank you to myev.com for helping to make this show. Myev.com is the place, should be your first stop, really, in the USA. If you're thinking of buying an EV sometime this year, maybe you are looking at 2020, maybe you want to start doing your research right now, maybe you're selling and moving onwards and upwards, check out myev.com. Someone else from Patreon to thank as well. David Kidd is now a producer of the show. David, thank you so much, my friend. I really appreciate it. We'll kick off with the Model 3 news then. A new set of images leaked online today, one video that I saw as well, and it showed the Tesla Model 3 has entered the production phase. Leaked details reveal that Tesla is now making the necessary preparations for the trial production runs of the Tesla Model 3 in Gigafactory 3 in Shanghai. This is according to the English language version of businesstimes.cn. They say that significantly leaked photos reveal images of two partly built Model 3s halfway down the assembly line. They have no information if the panels of the two sedans were made on site or if the electric vehicles were only assembled from shipped components. But it goes to show Model 3 is now, sorry, Gigafactory 3 is operational with the Model 3 and it seems to be starting trial assemblies for the Model 3. I think that the headline to that article, not that it's clickbait, you don't get, I'm not, I don't want to go like uh, criticizing the article, but it says production of the Model 3 has begun. Well, what this does show though is it shows Model 3, a kind of half assembled Model 3, halfway down the assembly line. Now, these could have arrived on a ship, they could have been flown in. They do, it doesn't mean they were made, they weren't stamped in China. It could just be they've got a small part of the factory ready to go. They put these parts in, they're seeing how they go down the production line. Or maybe it was built in China. I don't know. But I think you, you can't make the assumption from these videos and pictures that have leaked online. Either way, it's great news. It means that China's Gigafactory 3 has hit yet another milestone as Model 3s are actually inside the factory that only a few short months ago, Elon was standing on some mud and some dirt saying... We're going to be making cars in this field by the end of the year. Well, let's talk about the plug-in vehicle sales here in Europe. What kind of size market is it in the first half of the year? Who's doing well? Who's not doing well? What are we buying over here? Well, the European plug-in vehicle sales hit 259,000 units in the first half of this year, January to July. That's 34% higher than the equivalent period last year. Now, that figure does include all electric batteries, cars, and also plug-in hybrid cars. It's got to have a plug. A soft, mild hybrid doesn't cut it, I'm afraid. Not saying those cars can't do a job, but not the figures we're talking about here. 259,000 cars, well, units, with a plug socket, were sold in the first half of this year in the EU. That's passenger cars and light commercial vehicles as well. Well, Roland Earl, or Earl, from ev-volumes.com has put this together. Demand and supply experiences a profound shift towards pure battery electric vehicles compared to plug-in hybrids. Bev's share was 51% last year in 2018. This year, 68%. The change reflects the introduction of more stringent WLTP fuel economy tests, changes in taxation, grants promoting pure electric vehicles. Germany and the Netherlands have been the strongest growth contributors in terms of the pure volumes. Germany has actually become the largest market for plug-ins in Europe, displacing Norway to the number two position. Norway was always number one. Germany's now number one. Norway is still the world leader in EV uptake. If you do it not by volume, but by share, 47% of light vehicle sales so far this year have had a plug on them. That's up 10% from the same time last year. And it does pain me to say this, among the top 15 markets over here, 
the UK, is the only one in reverse gear. Plug-in hybrids lost their subsidies and pure battery electric vehicles lost a chunk of their subsidies, a £1,000 less than last year. The UK plans, though, to stimulate the EV market with some tax changes. It's called benefit in kind. I've talked about this a couple of times before, but I thought, you know what, for everyone listening around the world, let me explain why this is a really interesting way of stimulating EV sales for fleets and therefore the cars that can do the most miles. Company car taxation is going to 0% for pure battery electric cars, and it starts in April next year. This will postpone many battery electric vehicle purchases until next year. If I, for instance, was going to buy a company car, well, I don't know if I would do it now or if I'd wait till April. I've not given it hours of thought, but I kind of got reaction as well. Maybe I'd wait till April when the taxation went to zero. Let me explain how that works then, because this can, you can get a bit tied up in the weeds on this. Benefit in kind is a form of tax that we pay. And it is, if you break that down, it's a benefit that you get from your employer for doing your job, but it's not in money. It's in kind. So why is 0% such a big deal? Okay, let me try and explain this. If you have a company car, if, it, if you have a company car that's made available to you, so your employer provides a company car and it's available for private use, you take it home in the evenings, at the weekends, do the school run, use it for your personal use. The tax man will apply benefit in kind to that vehicle. Now to work out the tax on that vehicle, you multiply the value of the car by the percentage of the band that it sits in. And those bandings are done by pollution. Let's give you an example, right? This is why it doesn't make any sense to have a company car at the moment. And it makes all of the sense to have an electric company car next April. Say there's a car that costs £40,000, right? And say it's a pretty average car, so it emits about 125 grams of CO2 per kilometre. Well, that puts it in the 30% tax bracket. So what you do is you take your £40,000 the car is worth, the 30% tax bracket that sits in, you then get the £12,000 figure, because £12,000 is 30% of 40 grand. Take £12,000, then you multiply it by your personal tax band. So you pay your personal tax uh, down from what the lowest is 20% up to 45% in this country. So say in, in the middle, you pay 40% tax and you're a higher rate taxpayer. Then every single year, 40% of that £12,000 figure, you just ha you just lose in, ca in, in tax. So if you have a company car that's a pretty average car for the kind of person that would have a company car, you are losing £4,800 a year that you have to give the tax man for the benefit of taking that car home every night. Is it such a privilege when you're getting hit by almost £5,000 in your pocket? Oh, and if that car is a diesel, add another 4% flat rate on top. And it gets better. Because for EVs only, the cost of the car if it's a company car, and if it's only an EV, the cost of the car can be deducted from your salary before you pay tax. So from April next year, you get double bubble. You can deduct the cost of the car before you pay any tax, and the employee effectively pays benefit in kind of zero. So my prediction is this will be a huge stimulus from April next year, but... Uh, it's going to hold sales back until next year, at least in this country. It's why the UK is lagging Europe. But what do you think? Would that work for you? Would it work for the country that you're listening to this podcast in? Would it work personally? Would you have a company car if there was no tax implications at all? 0% benefit in kind, and you got to take off the value of the car before they started working out how much money you owe in tax. Now, I think this is a really big incentive because... The diesel lobby and the petrol lobby in this country are kicking up merry hell. There are so many articles. The PR companies are doing their best. They're, they're putting out articles left, right and centre saying think tanks have released this data about why it's penalising petrol and you know losing jobs and harming the economy. When you see that, when you know they're going in hard and lobbying politicians, you know they've worked out. This is terrible news for any car that's not electric. Even if you don't really want an electric car from April next year, it just makes sense to have one. It's going to be huge, is my prediction. Come back in April and see if that prediction's right.
Let's move on. After Chevrolet announced the 2020 Bolt EV range and the price, 259 miles, 417 kilometres, $37,500, including the destination charges, it now has the lowest price per mile of EPA range of any EV. The 2020 Bolt EV is number one. It costs you $145 a mile. That's $2 less than the Hyundai Kona Electric, $13 less than the previous, or the current model, Bolt EV says inside EVs. Chevrolet intends to start selling the 2020 Bolt EV sometime this year, but we won't see it in Q3, which means, well, if you stick with the current figure of $135 per mile, that's a little bit less than what I just said because I've taken off the sort of 2000-ish, 1875 federal tax credit that you will still get if you buy a Bolt in Q4. So if you buy a Bolt, in October, November, December, get a little bit of federal tax credit left on that. And of course, another thing is the real world price. After including all of the discounts from the manufacturer, then our dealer discounts, which you can't really predict in advance because you don't know what magic tricks they're going to play with the price at the dealers. It does make the 2020 Bolt EV pound for pound, or should I say miles per dollar, the number one winner. Let's talk Porsche. Porsche is once again trying to hit the headlines by finding new stunts they can do with their Taycan, this time demonstrating the performance of electrification of the Taycan on the Nürburgring. They've set a new record, the pure electric vehicle record for a four-door EV. That's a very specific record, I think you'll find. But no electric vehicle that is, has four doors has ever lapped the German circuit of the Nürburgring faster. Seven minutes and 42 seconds, according to Motor1.com. Porsche specified the vehicle used for the record-breaking run was the range-topping variant, the turbo, with dual electric motors, one for each axle, all-wheel drive, all-wheel steering, 21-inch wheels, and 600 horsepower at the driver's disposal. Let's talk VW, should we? The model that's leading VW's EV push and what Volkswagen has called the replacement to the e-Golf. It's definitely not a Golf, though. VW are keen for you to know. It might look like a Golf, same size as the Golf, weighs about the same as a Golf, but it's definitely not a Golf. It's the ID3. And it's not coming to the USA. Says Bengt for Green Car Reports today, the US is going to get the second model that VW makes. The second model is going to be more rugged. It's going to be a crossover hatchback, and it's called the ID Cross at the moment. Well, it was in 2017 when we saw the concept. Size-wise, think Ford Escape, RAV4, Honda CRV, Tesla Model Y. So while the ID3 will come with three battery pack sizes, that is... 45, 58, and 77 kilowatt hour usable. Only the top two will probably be used for the ID4. It's a bigger, it's a bigger car. Oh, and I'm calling it the ID4. And in fact, some people calling it the ID4X. I don't know. I think ID3, ID4 does make sense. I'm not sure about ID4X. The uh, US rated range has not been estimated yet, but of course, we know that platform does charge at over 100 kilowatts DC fast charging. Have you heard of NIU? N-I-U. NIU sold nearly 100,000 electric scooters across the planet last quarter. They've expanded their sharing programs into a dozen countries, including the USA, and they've shown revenue in the US of $75 million, growing year on year and doing very well, says Micah Toll. For electric, NIU's high-tech connected scooters are definitely premium scooters. The company also wants to target more medium levels though to do so they're working on the gova g-o-v-a the gova models the g1 the g3 and the g5 the g1 is going to cost between about 420 and 560 dollars and to reach a low price those won't have smart features they won't be so connected but not a bad price for a very nice electric scooter. I was playing on one on Saturday because uh, Nick Ramo, who has an EV channel called EV Nick, despite me carrying a bit of an injury at the moment, long story, check out recent podcasts of a week ago to find out what a silly sod I was to uh, do myself an injury. He still persuaded me on one. Uh, I could have broken the other rib. However, first time I've been on an electric scooter, and you know what? barrel of laughs can't use one in this country unfortunately can't ride them on the roads because you'll get points on your license can't ride them on the pavement because you'll get fined got to be on private land 
and they need to sort that out, really. However, it was a lot of fun. And what is the difference between an electric scooter and an electric bicycle? Some of those scooters go quicker than bikes. OK. Let's talk about where Gigafactory 4 could be. German newspapers are reporting that representatives of Tesla have been in Germany scouting locations for a possible European factory in the state of North Rhine-Westphalia, which is located in western Germany and shares a border with the Netherlands and Belgium, says Clean Technica. Representatives of the German government and Tesla have both declined to comment. You know what? When there's nothing to say, or if, if it was a made-up story, they would deny it. They would say, oh, you know, we, we, we're we looking forward to working with our German partners, but no, we're not building a gigafactory there. When both parties refuse or decline, politely decline, to comment, it normally means negotiations are ongoing and it's kind of a risky time for anyone to be saying anything publicly. Oh, I hope so. be fantastic to have yet another gigafactory making electric cars on this continent. And finally, the New York-based Bollinger Motors once looked like it would beat any other automaker, big or small, to the electric off-road segment. But Rivian stole its thunder, and let's face it, Rivian stole everyone's thunder. Their press office is certainly earning their money at the moment. Haven't made many cars, but everyone seems to be talking about Rivian, and they're getting some mega bucks investments on the likes of Amazon as well, so they've obviously got something in the locker. They have got two head-turning concepts, the R1T, the R1S, but Bollinger is fine-tuning its first prototype. And on September 26th, you and I get to see them. According to Autoblog, the truck depicted in a new 50-second clip hit the internet. is partially assembled. It hasn't changed much visually from the concept picture, the Photoshop that we saw, to what is now a test mule. Retro-inspired, cinder-block-shaped, Jeep Wrangler, Land Rover Defender Cross, packed with features, a pass-through that stretches from front to back, front to trunk, six individual removable roof panels, loads of storage, and we get to see it in exactly one month today. Let's move on to a brand new question of the week, revealed it on Sunday's show. And I'm asking about this because I did the last four days really on about 20 miles. We didn't plug in. I haven't plugged in at home for over a week now. But whenever we've gone to do some shopping, the cinema, we've gone to a couple of places that have got seven kilowatt charging posts. We've just been bunging it on for an hour here, hour there. And we haven't paid anything. It's all been free charging. And I thought, well, this is kind of weird. We're running the car around at about 10%. I don't know if that's good or bad for the battery, but... It was an interesting behaviour. Like, with a petrol or diesel car, I don't know, I'd just go and put a tank in. And, you know, at the times when I've not had any money in my life, then you put five quid in and work out how long you can make it last. And then, you know, as you get a bit older and make a little bit more money sometimes, and you think, oh, I'll just go put 60 quid in and, and just put a tank in. Owning an EV now, we haven't put any fuel in it for ages. We just, when we're out and about doing our jobs, we've just been plugging in and topping up. Little bit by little bit, sipping the electrons. Is that normal? How do you charge? I'm asking EV drivers, and hopefully anyone who listens to this who's EV curious, who can't chip into this conversation, will learn something. How do you charge? How often do you charge? And why do you choose that charging pattern? Well, if you want to get hold of me on email, it's hello at evnewsdaily.com or check out Facebook and YouTube. Thank you to 244 patrons of the podcast. You help inform the thousands of people who listen around the world to this show, this community that somehow I've built. I don't know how I did it, but uh, anyway, uh, a few people seem to listen. And we are hopefully informing, hopefully entertaining, and hopefully spreading the word. I mean, if you can share this podcast with someone you know who's even curious, someone who you know who think might get some value, some benefit out of it, please, you know, I'm just desperate to grow this show to tell more people about how great EVs are. Please do so. If you there's no you don't have to check out Patreon, but it's on there, patreon.com slash evnewsdaily. If you want to get any of the old shows, the archive is online. All 561 shows are in the RSS feed. I don't delete any old ones. New ones come first and free and automatically to the subscribers. If you hit subscribe, then you get them before anybody else, and it's a free subscription. Come and say hi over the next 24 hours on the socials and have a wonderful day. I'll catch you tomorrow. Remember, there is no such thing as a self-charging hybrid.